Good morning. My name is Giulio Alessandrini. I work as a consultant for Wolfram Research, uh, especially in the area of color and image processing. And I'm going to talk about these two topics during this conference. I have a first talk about image recognition and a second talk mainly about color processing and what you can do with colors in Mathematica. I'll start uh, explaining very, very briefly what the main point of image, like the main workflow in image recognition is. And I'll try to move right away to some application examples so you will be all able to see how to implement, implement this in a, um, a concrete matter. So um, image recognition, w what is image rec recognition? It's a really, really broad term that encompasses like many, many different things. It, uh, is, um, it intersects with computer vision, it intersects with, um, with machine learning as uh, Anthony showed this morning. Uh, of course, it uses element, if you apply that to images, it uses element of image filtering, segmentation, morphology, like it's basically really, really broad. So uh, I wanted to focus on some like uh, really key uh, point that are essential to like any image recognition task. First point is setting goals. Uh, so, I mean, you could ask really, really broad questions or really specific question. The important thing is that your question is clear to you. Uh, otherwise, it's really very, very, it sounds stupid, but it's, it's really important that the question is, is for, like, uh, crafted correctly in order to implement an efficient algorithm. So you could, uh, you could ask, for example, here for some specific properties. For example, here, I'm just importing the image and then I want to identify uh, lines. Because of my, whatever my application is, I just care about uh, where the line, uh, uh, lines in some images uh, are. Or uh, I, could, um, I could ask other, other questions, for example, what's the, what's the position of a specific object? And so, oh, j just to show you before, I call an internal function, which is basically image lines. So you can uh, achieve this with like few lines of codes. Um, and another question you could ask is, like, oh, wh what's the position of things? For example, I want to track an object. This is, this, for example, this, this red cabling in this ferry wheel. So mm, how can I do that? This is not a line, but I have other, other ways to track it down. Here I'm calling, for example, image saliency filter. The image saliency filter uh, has some certain method inside, and so you can identify, in this case, for example, the most salient point based on colors and segment it out. So uh, here I'm highlighting the, the salient region while fading away all the rest of the image. And so, like here, of course I can, I can use this to track down things if I need. Uh, there are all sorts of applications. And of course you can even go to, uh, to broader questions. For example, I could ask, uh, uh, what, what's the subject? I mean, what's represented in this image? And, and this is why we started developing Image Identify that was shown already this morning. So I, I won't spend too much time on Image Identify. Uh, and basically, so here you, you can just call it. This is a call with no parameters and will just tell you like the best guess right away for what the, this image is a representation of. Um, in this talk, I, I probably uh, chose not to deal with Image Identify because that's kind of all under the hood. I mean, we are working to uh, um, take all the framework out of the hood and make it available for the end user, but we are not there yet. So uh, I don't know, I always have the feeling that the audience will feel a bit cheated if I show stuff that you cannot really control re um, very well yourself. So in my talk, I'll try to um, present application that you can actually uh, prepare and write and, and use like, in their entirety yourself. Um, so, okay, goals. So, I mean, uh, goals is the question, and then that's like the, the like where I'm going, and there's the how I'm going there. And this is about features. So, uh, like, if you if you think about images, they are just a bunch of pixels. So, in the end, like the for example, average uh, an average image could be something like this. This is a lot of information, but is also mainly useless. So how, how can I deal with this uh, information overload? I mean, uh, um, Anthony and other people show like before uh, that you can do dimensionality reduction. You can do um, like feature, in, in general, I would talk about feature extraction here. The point is, uh, once I have my question, not everything in the image is relevant uh, as answer to that question. So another extremely important point is 
uh, which features, which are in like more physical term, the observables uh, that are relevant to my, to my problem, to my model or, or whatever. So uh, of course you can do this in Mathematica as well. It, it depends on um, uh, basically on which, which feature you're interested in, you will use different approaches. So for example, uh, sometimes you can just use simple filtering uh, this is a color image of the dog, and like this is a stupid thing, but it, it's really important. Oh, sorry, I have to import the image first. Uh, is internet working? Yes, great. So this is something stupid, but many times overlooked. Like many, many, in many, many occasions, I don't really need color information. I mean, as human beings, we can identify a lot of things without colors, just using the, the luminosity or the, the intensity information. So uh, you can use simple filtering like this. This is a stupid example, but you can use more sophisticated filtering to, to treat your images. Or you can actually do segmentation. For example, here I, I have this image of a um, uh, soccer field. So uh, what, one thing you can do, let's say I'm interested in, in finding like corners here, and like by mixing filtering and segmentation, I can uh, use this in recent function, local adaptive binarize, that you locally binarize the image with a local threshold. And uh, again, here, for example, I'm using grayscale because for getting corners, it's not really important where green or white is. And, and here, so I can get like the, the most salient bit um, in terms of corners of the image with, again, four lines of codes. Um, and then you can use image recognition itself to take out features for you uh, in, in order to perform another image recognition task. For example, here, I'm importing a face database. Let's see, like something like this. And like, these are big images. I mean, big. Uh, there's a lot of extra information uh, which is not strictly uh, speaking related to faces. So I can call uh, an like, computer vision function, which is like um, fi find faces, for example. And, and this will allow me to extract uh, like more proper data, oops, sorry. So here, for example, is a mapping between the, the original image and something which is like more, more proper for an image recognition task. And, and this was also extremely easy, just uh, basically cropping with fine phases and a bit of, I guess, I'm equalizing the images. Yes, I'm calling image transform. These are all simple pre-processing step that can like, Im greatly improve the, the accuracy of, uh, of your uh, classification recognition uh, detection functions. So all, all this stuff uh, can be done. And last, last bit, but not, not less important, is the training. So we've seen this example already, uh, like how to identify digits. Like here I took a liberty of uh, um, greatly uh, uh, trimming the, the training set. So here I have, for each digit, I have just two images. And, and this is an example uh, of how uh, like the training set is important. So like here I have a digit four, this I manually draw, and, and this is not recognized. But let's, I mean, this may be a failure of the algorithm, but in this case, much more likely that is a failure of um, my choice, I mean, failure is in myself. My training set is not good enough. So like doing something uh, as stupid as like increasing a bit the, um, the size of the training set allows me to, um, to recognize these stages correctly. So l last step, not less important, like be sure about uh, the quality of the training set. Actually, this, is, this part uh, it was also really important uh, when we train image identify at the beginning, there was a lot of noise in, in the training set because we didn't start with uh, like our personal training set. We start collecting images from all over the place. And, and there were all sorts of problems because of this, because like, I remember, um, was for example, one, one concept that we wanted to identify was like uh, airplane seats. And it turned out that like, the, the um, image net, since it, uh, the, like, the data set for, for um, airplane seats, was full of pictures of men, like human being, seated on, a, on an airplane seat. So basically, uh, uh, because like, people were uploading those images, by, 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 it was like a crowdfund project. So in the end, when, you, when we started trying image identify on people, uh, we were seeing results as airplane seat. And so why, why this is an airplane seat? Uh, okay, it's really easy to, to, to understand. When you go and, and, and check manually in the training set, you see that actually you, you, have, you have basically wrong, in uh, wrong creation. So uh, th this part can be difficult to automate in a sense that human judgment is still really, really important. 
but under, underlines greatly the importance of um, like a, a, having a curated proper training set. And this is most, I think this is all what I'm going to say about like the, the theoretical introduction, uh, also because the time is not so much. So I, I'd like to move right away to uh, three application examples, hoping to have enough time to go through all of them. So the first one is a skin detector. It's a really uh, simple, uh, like few line again, few line of code project. So the, the purpose of this is, let's start from a picture of a, of a man or a woman, whatever, and we would like to be able to go to this point here. So we have basically a hit map or a binary map, whatever, that uh, tells me where the skin of this person is. And this may have like all sorts of application. I was talking to somebody this morning. Uh, uh, that there's an app apparently on the phone that you can take a picture of your skin and send it to a doctor to have like a straight away uh, like a, a, um, an analysis about your like physiological conditions. So, I mean, and, and to do this, if you take a picture of yourself or, or like or your babies, whatever, you, you want to be able to extract. Again, this is a feature that you want to to extract. Maybe for fast processing, maybe we're happy with this. It, it, I mean, this, this is just a step. I mean, it's up to us to decide how to use it. But still, uh, um, this is again, uh, I don't need the whole thing, I just need like the skin. So it, it may be useful to get out. So how, how do we do this in Mathematica? Um, okay, first we need uh, um, a face data set. And, and I'm using, I, have, I will put the, the link in the, in, in the presentation so you can try this on your own. Uh, now I'm just loading this locally because it's much faster. So I'm loading basically um, the classification, what pixels in images are skin, and what pixel images are not skin. And just to see basically what's happening, this is uh, a chromaticity plot. Uh, oh, but by the way, uh, I'm talking about colors tomorrow. The, what's written on the program is slightly wrong. So if you uh, are a bit interested in understanding why colors are important, uh, you can come to my talk tomorrow. So, um, this here is the distribution of a skin pixel, this one, and the non-skin pixel. And you see that they have like, basically, they're quite, skin pixels are quite a, a compact um, region in the 3D uh, LAB space, more on the LAB space tomorrow. So we can actually try to, um, I hope to create a good classifier. Uh, I'm using here naive bias because it's quite fast and I want to apply it to every pixel of images. Uh, as Anthony said, you can always force uh, classify to use a specific uh, method. And then we can see how accurate it will be. Oh, okay, this is pre-evaluated, so it's quite good in getting uh, um, a right answer on the training set. And, and we can also like vi visually see, this will take a while probably to plot with the density in 3D, but uh, just to, to see a bit better what's going on within classify. This, uh, don't pay, I mean, the, the, the region here is, is pretty bad because I'm using na naive bias. Other methods will um, create a more, a more compact region here, but as I say, I want, I want a fast classifier, and the performance is not, not much worse. So now that I have my classifier, I can actually, um, I mean, usually what you do, you divide your, 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 your training set, like in one part that you use strictly for training and one part that you use for testing, so here, like this part was never seen by the classifier, and I'm using it to test the image. So I have also fairly good prediction power on pixels that are not in my training set. This is the confusion matrix. So like when I'm on the diagonal, the prediction was good, and these are the uh, across the diagonal are the um, misaligned prediction. And and now that everything is ready, I can define a function, uh, which basically will take will perform all this operation, extract the color from the image. Uh, take out the image data, uh, send them to the uh, classifier function, and then put it back with a ray shape in like in a good shape for like uh, being represented as an image. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is a new operator and is uh, um, I think right composition, and it's quite useful to write function in the way you think about them and not in the way Mathematica will uh, apply them. So like this is actually the Last, this is the first function applied, and this is the last function applied. And you can read through this. It's quite easy to comment and explain to people. Um, so just some bit of programming here. Uh, let's, let's try this. So this is, I just picked random, random faces from the database. So this, for example, I chose because it was interesting because it has some problems. As uh, like we have been a bit naive, and 
that there are also other natural colors that can be close to uh, skin colors. For example, this woman has like hair that are uh, close to dark skin in terms of colors. Uh, but like if I go with darker hair, this was the image I had in the example, uh, this is like fairly accurate depiction of the, of the skin pixels. I mean, this classifier tend to be more, uh, they give more false positive and false negative, and then it depends on how you train it and what, what's your purpose, if you want more of this or that. Uh, you can again find uh, um, image that can um, confuse the classifier. This one has also some natural colors in the, in the clothes, but it depends again on the image. And for example, this one here, it's fairly good. And you can make it even better with, um, I mean, we talk about pre-processing, but there's also post-processing. So after you've run your classifier, like again, I'm doing here like a bit of morphological operation, like I'm opening the, so opening basically reduced the small white features in the, in the image. Uh, I'm, so I'm, I'm using opening on the image with a disk matrix to, to basically close this white part and binarizing the image and deleting the small binary component. And, and you see that just by one line of code, I can clean up fairly well the resulting <coughs> segmentation. So again, like this was like few line of code is uh, quite fast, and I, I, I still get something. Of course, I, 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 can, I can do I can do much more um, if I um, oh, if I take more time. Uh, again, this is a, a quick one, but fairly accurate one classifier. I'll try, I'll try to distinguish female from men, or, or like men uh, from women, whatever. So uh, again, I'm loading a data set of tagged images, and, and these images are all in the form like, I have a picture, and it's female. I have a picture, and it's man, and all like this. I mean, it's again, fairly, fairly simple thing. And once I have it, I, I use, uh, basically this is like, the feature example instruction I, 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 I showed before, I'm, I'm calling fine faces and Instagram transform to have like uniform faces like this. Uh, so we are mostly, I mean, these are all, all misaligned, but so I cannot fix for everything. Uh, I do as much as I can with like little, little steps. And then we train the, the classifier again. The, the accuracy is fairly good. Um, on the, on the training set, not so good as just 85% on, on the test set, but uh, actually it's performing quite well on, on real images. And, and this is something that you can do really easily in Mathematica. Once you have, you have your classifier function, you can, again, in few lines of code, you can pack this into, like I'm writing this gender detect function. And, and, and like this performs like, a, it is a, a bit closer to like, instead of one line example, I want to show this because like, you can really easily build your interface. This is just checking if there's a face, if there's no face. You, you, can, you can write all kind of exit scenario and it's still really, really uh, brief and, and concise in terms of code. So once, once you have your, your function, just this bunch of images I, I took from Google or Pixabay, I don't know, all like public domain images of people, and you, you compute the result. And then you can quickly like, create a report. This is something you can, you can deploy this to the cloud. You can, you can do whatever you like with this. It's really few lines and doesn't take much time. So uh, like, it doesn't work like every time. Like for example, this is a find faces problem. So this, this face was um, not recognized by find faces. But when, when the face is picked, actually this is not so bad. So this was like, uh, okay, I could, I could be lying, but please believe me, these are the first images I, I, I could find of like, for, like uh, um, close, close view in, in terms of faces. And, and again, uh, this is a fairly decent data set, but not huge. I think I have 100 images of men and 100 of, of, um, of women. So it's not something that requires you years to, to assemble. Um, and if we want to do something a bit more complicated, how much time do I have? I don't know, let's say five minutes. Uh, here's, uh, like instead of a binary classifier, I'm, I have four categories. So let's say if I can, my, my purpose here, let's say if I can classify um, images of seasons based on the content. And as I'm mainly dealing with uh, color processing, uh, I will use again colors to do this. Oh, sorry. So what I do here is uh, I got uh, um, like 100 or so, yes, images of uh, seasons from, from Google, Google Images. And uh, so just to see what they are, they're something like this. So this is what just, uh, I write spring, summer, winter, and I get images. So they, they may be re relevant, they may be irrelevant. I'm, I'm not curating this, this set. Um, once I, I do this, I go and see what's the color distribution. So, oh, yeah, this is much smaller than 
sorry. All four of them fit on my screen, but where was the other one? Oh, here. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. You don't mind. Let's be between with winter. We don't have winter. So um, spring, summer, you see that the color distribution is uh, like not, not encompassing the full RGB square. Uh, it's still, still a reasonable chunk, but I mean, let's hope the overlap is not too much and see what we can do with this. So there's, uh, I'll try to, do the, to go through this in steps, like in terms of increasing complexity, so we can see what we get from different approaches. Like, first approach, like the super naive one, we can throw images within Classify, so uh, we can see what Classify is able to do just with the image set. And, um, yeah, I can do it in five minutes. So this is, again, the, our usual friend classifier function. I've, again, divided the training, my whole data set in training set and test set just to, to see what's going on. And if we see here, uh, I will change every time slightly because I'm randomizing training set and, and test set, so this is why I changed. Um, so I have, like, 72%, which is not great accuracy, considering that this is a training set. But again, I was doing no, basically no pre-processing, so it's not, not too bad on cl classifier term. And, but this is a fairly low 62% uh, on, uh, on the test set. So, okay, this was a bit stupid. Let's, let's try to put some, uh, to inject some uh, human intelligence in this computation. So one thing I can do is to go again to the LAB color space. Why I do this? I mean, again, more about this tomorrow, but what I can do here is basically re reduce the dimensionality of the problem from a 3D problem to a 2D problem because I'm actually dealing with colors, so with hues. I don't really care about the brightness of those pixels. So let's, let's go to the LAB color space and let's see how the season will look here. So this is like the view from the top. I'll try to go through this quickly. And, and instead of using the full images, I'm just extracting the dominant colors from the image. So I, I'm sim greatly simplifying the problem. So this is an example of what I get. So like getting with random images, images, I'm getting a different set of color every time. I'm using four colors for each image. So I, I define a function that extracts the dominant color. And then I try with, for example, here, oh, sorry, a four color classifier. And this is doing like already better. Before, we were on like um, 60, no, 70 something. And actually, we see that simplifying the problem, simplifying the feature space, we can actually get a better result. Because if all the extra information was noise, it wasn't really needed. It was just uh, uh, annoying the classifier, actually. Um, but still, is not doing much, much better on the, on, on the test set. I can try with more colors here. I have six colors. And I have to redefine this and retrain, and I get, even, I get even slightly better here, but still, uh, this is also a bit better, but, but I'm, I'm not um, close to what I really um, call a good, good classifier. So let's try different approaches. So another approach I have, and I, I won't show this because I'm running out of time, is um, let's use a probability distribution. And my first approach was a, a bit naive, was it like let's use a flat distribution. So we use a region framework and defined region distance as like quality measure in order to, to see what's going on. And so like basically this is a 2D region defined by the distribution of colors. This is doing better, uh, but so okay, here I was defining some function. You, you, you can read about this in the, in the notebook. I don't want to take too much time. Like for example, like this is an example of how you define your custom classifier. This is not calling classify, you're writing this on, on your own. And then you put the picture in, and you choose the, the number of colors you want to uh, um, extract from the image, and it will give you an answer. So it's doing fairly well with winter and autumn, but then we can see in the next page that if we do uh, the proper set, it's even actually worse on average. And why so? Uh, this is because, like, if we, um, this is the training set, by the way, and if we, if we look at the single re um, seasons, we see that spring and summer, they were really close in terms of regions, so the overlap was really huge. And uh, so this approach is doing, is doing actually better on autumn and winter, but is not really good here. So what I can do is go a step farther and compute the proper distribution instead of staying with uh, just, just a flat distribution. So this one here is I'm using smooth kernel distribution to smooth a bit this discrete distribution of colors. And this is the proper color distribution for my, my training set. And uh, okay, this is from, from the top. 
so if this is just the white thing, it's just uh, I wasn't taking enough time to fix the internalizing of the, of the graph, but uh, this is not really important. The important thing is now, I, oh, this is my only formula, by the way. I'm done, I'm done. And um, so I will define a new uh, season classifier that is using this full probability distribution. And when, once I have it, I can finally put it to a test. And we can see, oh, oh, oh. I haven't defined everything, sorry. Uh, let me, oh yeah, I have to do this first. Yep. Now that I have this, oh, oh, why? It was working a moment ago as usual. Yeah, apparently it's still working here. Okay, so that was the only one not working. Uh, I can, I mean, you see that the quality is really, really improved. So here, like by using, I injected a bit more information in terms of distribution, not so much, slightly more complex, but I have a function that gives me like huge amount of improvement over the last, over the, the result. And we can see like this is a kind of a final uh, showcase. I can take random images and sometimes have misclassified images, but they are usually fairly understandable. These are more like autumn colors, but uh, like it, is performing fairly, fairly well in, in terms of like good and, and bad classification. So basically this is it. Sorry, I rushed a bit the last, the last part, but uh, yes, okay, I'm done. Thank you for your attention.